Oh, that's pretty neat. See that? <laughs> yeah. That's a new thing. <laughs> Technology. So welcome, everyone. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about uh, dealing with trafficking witches. Uh, like I said, it was a very important topic to talk about because a lot of people don't know how to deal with the, you know, demonic attack coming from a witch. And so uh, we're going to talk about some of the things that witches do and how, what they do in order to... Um... Okay, okay. Yeah, so we, we're going to go ahead and talk about some of the things that witches do and what you could do to fight back, all right, to protect yourself because anybody... Anybody could be a witch, all right? Honestly, anybody could be a witch. So you have to be able to, you know, you, you look at these things that I'm going to give you today, these tools and this knowledge that I'm giving you today in order to identify witches. They could be working with you. They could be anywhere, okay? They could be inside your ministry. They could be, uh, you know, in church with you. Uh, there's a lot of witches in churches, uh, unfortunately, and they go, they lay hands on people and what they're trampling demons inside of people. So you have to be very careful who lays hands on you, all right? So uh, first of all, let's go ahead and start with prayer. Reverend uh, Stacy. if you want to lead the prayer tonight, appreciate sure. it. Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening giving you thanks, praise, honor, and glory. Once again, we thank you for the, the information that we're going to receive from Reverend Miguel. We ask, Father God, that you would inspire him and give him the words to say. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay. All right. So the majority of people that come to us for ministry are struggling with some type of witch, some type of warlock. Um, so today we're going to show you how to deal with these things. Okay. And some of you are deliverance ministers. Some of you are not, but you want to learn and that's fine. You need to know how to defend yourself and your families against demonic attack coming from a witch. Okay. So now keep in mind the witches. Um, and I tell this to people all the time. You know, they people call them warlock, male witches, but in reality, witches call themselves witches. They don't call themselves warlock. Okay, so the, whether it's female or male, they refer to each other as a witch, not as a warlock or a witch. Okay, so it's not. So people call them, you know, like if somebody said the warlock attack, we you know it's re, they consider themselves to be witches, not warlock. Okay, so the best way to stop um, attacks from witches and warlocks, and I'm going to call them warlocks because that, you know, most people, when they hear warlock, it's a male witch, okay? Um, it's to make sure that you don't have open doors. You don't have open doors. This is done by how do you close your, the doors uh, that, that are open? You confess your sins to God. Ask him to forgive you for your sins. Uh, you know, the Lord is faithful to forgive you uh, if you're really repentant of whatever sin is in your life. And he's faithful to forgive you. So one of the best ways to close those doors is by confessing your sins to God and asking God to forgive you for your sins because that's something that witches um, exploit. And what they do what they do is, um, I'll go into more details, but what they like to do is they like to see what kind of sin you're involved in. Uh, if you like you know, getting yourself drunk, they watch, they watch you. And then they take advantage of that to curse you, okay? So... That's something that we're going to talk about a little bit further on. The second thing I want to make sure is that you have a solid relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. A solid relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ involves following God, taking up your cross and following him, not living in the world, praying often, reading the word of God, right, which is your substance, and having a close relationship with Jesus, praying often, okay, in everything you do. All right. So make sure you have a solid relationship with Jesus Christ. If you have a solid relationship with Jesus Christ, the devil can't touch you. Witches can't touch you. Nobody could touch you, okay? As a matter of fact, if a witch was to send a demon to you and you're a solid Christian, the demon will go back to the witch and punish the witch, okay? So that's that's the reality of things. You have to be a solid Christian, even in this ministry. If you're if you're a, if you're a Christian that it's not going to it's, it's living in the world, you cannot be in this ministry because those demons will tear you apart. All right, you have to live as holy as you can. And we know we're all sinners, but you got to make sure that you walk, you know, the godly walk. Because people are looking at you. You represent Jesus Christ. And the first thing they say, look at this guy. Look what he's doing. You know, he's a pastor. Look what he's doing. Okay. That's the first thing you need to do. So stop living a sinful lifestyle. 
Witches and warlock are very good at identifying open doors that have been opened through sin. And they watch you. If they hate you, they're going to watch you and they're going to wait for the right time. And there's different ways they watch you, okay? They're not simply by looking at you. And I'll talk a little bit about that as we go along. They exploit your sin and they use it against you. What do I mean by they use it against you? What do I mean by they use it against you? If they know you have a wandering eye and you like, if you're a male and you like women, they'll send women that you like to try to draw you out through lust. If they mm -hmm. know you like drugs, alcohol, they'll make that readily available to you. So they try to make whatever your passion is for you available mm -hmm. to you. Right, right. I think uh, 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 Ms. Don wanted to say something. There's more. I was just going to say the open door would be something that they can come in to, like he said, to bring, to ultimately curse you through. That's right. Right. So now keep in mind that all curses and spells must have a cause. Okay. So the Bible tells us as a bird, wonder, as a bird wanders and a swallow, uh, as the swallow by flying. So the costless, uh, the costless should never come. So meaning a curse without a cause will not come upon a person. Okay. So there's some misspelling there. So I apologize about that. <laughs> so, so yeah. So the, uh, for a curse to come upon a person, there must be a cause. There must be a sin. There has to be something there for a curse to fall upon a person. So this is why people come to us, you know, that have been cursed by a witch or whatever. We try to figure out why is the reason why you've been cursed? There must be an open door someplace. We figure out what that open door is and we close it. All right. And then we cast out the demon out of the person. And so uh, it's important that you figure out what the open door is and it's closed because if, the, if the, there's not a cause for that curse, that curse shouldn't be there. Okay. You can have curses in the family line from past behaviors of your ancestors, but they may not be activated until some sin in the current time activates it. Do we understand that? So you could have in your generational line a curse, but it's not activated until you sin and uh, activate that curse. That's how curses in the generational bloodline work. All right, so this is why it skips generations sometimes. Some people have it in one generation, and then the next generation comes, they don't have it. And then the following generation has it because it's in the bloodline, but it just hasn't been activated. All right. So once every somebody becomes a Christian, they should go through deliverance. Everybody should go through deliverance. Okay. Because we all picked up demons before we were Christians. We're full of demons. And so you become Christians. We become born again. A lot of those demons leave when we become born, born again. But uh, some of them stay and they have to be told they have to leave. Okay. They have to be confronted and told they have to leave. All right. Witches will manipulate and control you and others through the use of demons. So they'll use demons. They will use demons to control you and manipulate you. So how is the way a demon can manipulate you? This is very simple. How does a demon manipulate a person? Um, through their way of thinking. Who said that? <laughs> <laughs> Felicia. Felicia, yes, 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 Felicia. So they could, they could... They can manipulate you by putting thoughts in your mind. Okay, now demons cannot read your mind. However, they can manipulate you by saying things. Why don't you go watch porn? Right? Why don't you, uh, why don't you go drink? You know, why don't you go smoke? Things like that. Demons could put that in your mind. And so they manipulate you that way. So how do, how do witches manipulate other people? Right? A witch to send a demon, to manipulate a person, to do something to you. So a lot of times when people get deliverance, they say, my family member turned against me. You know, people are against me. Everybody turned against me. What's the reason for that? Because the witch sent the demon to do that? That's right. Well, it could be a witch sent the demon to do that, to manipulate people around them, to attack the person that received deliverance, or it could just be the demons of the family members that are just upset. And they turn against the family member, okay? <laughs> they do that. <laughs> Go ahead. Somebody wants to say something? But if I'm, you know, if, if, if you're a witch, if you're a witch and you wanted to manipulate people, you send a demon to manipulate the people around the, the person who you hate to make their life a living hell. And it could happen. 
So we have people in the past, we have to explain to people, you know, after you get deliverance, there's a possibility that these things will happen. And the reason for that is because you're free and they hate it. They hate that you're free. And the demons still have hold on the people around you. And they're able to manipulate those people to, to attack you and to do ugly things to you, right? So this is the time where you have to remain faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ and not say, I'm not delivered. Why are people attacking me? This deliverance minister didn't do his job or whatever. We hear all kinds of excuses, all right? So you have to warn people. They said, you know, there's a possibility that you, after you get your deliverance that you're going to have family members who are going to turn against you, all right? And if a witch wants to manipulate people around you, he can because, they, you know, he has, he has, he knows what to do. All right. And if you're, they're able to manipulate you, send demons to, to, um, there was a girl that I, I prayed for. This is probably a few years ago. It was a very bad witch. And she said, she was, she told me some of the spells that she cast upon people. And she showed me pictures of some of the people before and after. To, I mean, the stuff they're able to do against these people totally, uh, the lady kind of made herself into a demon. Um, one of the ladies turned herself into a demon, tattoo herself, had horns and everything else. So they, they, yeah, they're able to put demons inside of people and manipulate people and manipulate people around them. So this stuff really happens. And it's, you know, if you're, if you're not protected, if you're not, if you don't have a solid relationship with Jesus Christ, you could be affected by this. Okay. Um, all right. So now I'm going to talk about something that people don't really talk about. They think this is kind of uh, the occult, but this is stuff that, you know, we hear all the time in ministry and they're called, um, a way that the, the witches astral project into people's homes. They use these things called, um, they use these things called, um, supernatural networks and they call ley lines. Okay. And these ley lines are lines that they use. They write demons. They use it through demons and they're able to, um, astral project into people's homes. All right. So it's like riding a subway. Right? And supposedly these things are all over the world. So witches claim that they use this network in order to travel into people's homes and to do certain things. Uh, and so um, this is where the, the myth of the flying witch comes from in the broom. This is where it comes from. All right. Because witches are able to actually project into people, into people's homes. Witches can make you sick. They could even kill you. Okay. If they know you have an open door, they will exploit that and use that against you to the point that, you know, they will kill you. Witches, at, uh, witches watch for open doors by observing you, usually to what we call familiars, right? A demon or simply or watching your behavior. So uh, this is kind of interesting. I'm going to talk about this, but, you know, I, I'm not, I don't think linear. I, I think here and there and everywhere. So because my mind's always work, working <laughs> all the time so um they they use what we call familiar so does anybody know what familiar is anybody Spirit. knows what yeah go ahead the spirit that's been in a family line yeah for many generations yeah so yeah they, they've been in their family for a very long time because uh, witches are what usually what what are witches usually Humans. huh they're people they're people right but usually witches run in what generations generations usually when you see witches the grandma was a witch or the mother was a witch or somebody was a witch okay in their family line all right so this demon passed from one family member to another and they use this familiar to spy to spy to give them you know like when you go to a psychic the witch is using a familiar spirit and that familiar spirit is telling it's talking to your demons <laughs> and it's, it's telling the familiar spirit you know, the stuff that's going on in your life. And then, oh, you know, you're going to go to your uh, bank tomorrow and you're going to get that loan. And, you know, how did you how did you know that I had a loan? You know, you know how do you know I was going to apply for that loan? Right. So they manipulate the bank manager to give you the loan. So you, oh, she, you know, she's only charged me $100. And the next time, $15,000. Yeah, $20. Yeah. We, how many times have we heard this, Reverend Stacey and Reverend uh, Hutchinson? Countless. Oh, this time. <laughs> Countless times we hear it. And, Look and, under the third tree in the backyard. There's ten thousand dollars there. Oh my God! Oh, ten thousand dollars. <laughs> we we hear it all the time. We hear this stuff all the time. So they use familiar spirits to manipulate the situation, to mm -hmm. spy on you, and they they possess animals. They possess cats. They possess uh, dogs. They they possess birds. You know, um, 
one of the signs of, of witches being in the home. Well, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. <laughs> um, so they use, you know, they watch. This is they watch all the time. And so if, let's suppose you're at work, right? They're watching you. They're waiting for you to mess up. And they're going to use that against you. They're going to send a demon to get you because they, they, they cannot do it unless they have a reason to. So they look for that specific door that was open in order to get to you. Now, this is not to make you paranoid. This is my, 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 my and I'm, I'm not trying to make anybody paranoid here. But what I'm trying to tell you is that you need to look for these things. I'm going to tell you what to look for and how to deal with them. So I'm 20 minutes so far. Uh, okay. All right, so now listen to me. <laughs> this is true, okay? This is true. Witches can shape shift, okay? We've seen people shape, change change uh, shapes in front of us. All right, they're able to change their shapes. They turn into animals. All right, and I'm not. This is not. This is not. Uh, you know, you guys are probably saying Pastor Miguel is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> they do these things, okay? Um, Witches take their religion very seriously. They live their religion. They live it. Most most Christians, they go to church on Sunday. They go to church on Sunday, and then uh, Monday to Friday, they forget all about God. Uh, you know, witches are practicing their craft all the time. They're practicing, and they're worshiping, and they're doing whatever they do. They do it all the time, okay? So we have to do the same. We have to, you have to live a Christian lifestyle, all right? Witches can charge an object to curse you. So what, what do I mean by charging an object? Can anybody explain to me what that is? Um, make it appear in your home. Or so take solution? It away. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So charging an object is putting a demon inside an object. Okay. And they give you a present. Let's suppose this is a sanitizer. Hand sanitizer, right? And they get the sanitizer and they... They put a demon in the hand sanitizer and then they give it to you as a gift. Oh, here, have this hand sanitizer. You bring it into your home and you curse your home. Okay. So what does that mean? I'm going to tell you a little story about me. I bought two chairs. I don't know. I always talk about the story in Periscope because <laughs> it was so interesting. So I always talk about the story. I brought in two chairs. I bought two chairs for my office. Okay. They were really nice chairs. Let me tell you. But um, um, they were actually... Um, I got it from a friend that said that the, the, there was something wrong with the with the uh, with the chairs. OK, so he said, can you bless my chairs? And I said, yeah, sure. I bless your chairs. I went to bless the chairs. Right. And I, and I, I, I started blessing the chair and the chair just <laughs> ran off my hands, ran off my hands. They were cursed. The chairs were cursed. All right. So then he didn't want the chairs. And I said, OK, um, I'll buy the chairs. From <laughs> so I took the chair. They were nice chairs. Right. So I, all I did was bless and command the demons to leave. And that was it. That was the end of the, the problem. All right. So what, what, is, what is my point here? My point is when you buy stuff, especially if it's used, you need to bless it. Okay. And by the way, if you buy anything at what stores, Reverend Stacy? <laughs> Ross, <laughs> TJ Maxx. Reverend Stacy? Uh, Jason? Uh, what yeah. is it? Ross, TJ Maxx, all those places like that. Most cursed stuff you'll find. Yep. Our shoes. <laughs> Martians, yeah. yep. Yeah. And I'm, I hope they don't sue me for saying that, but it's the truth. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so most of the stuff you fi you find there, a lot of the artifacts they sell, like, you know, the, you know, the little statues and you know, they have all kinds of little, you know, figurines and stuff. Most of that stuff is cursed. Okay. So if you, yeah, go ahead, Stephanie. So I say, um, so you're saying to bless pretty much everything because um, not just those stores, I believe right. other stores, yeah. is, I mean, any place that you shop because some people don't have a choice but to shop at Ross and TJ Maxx and Marshalls. Right. So well, I'll say JC Penney's and Belts and Macy's and all, everything need to be blessed really because yeah, we don't know what they're doing either, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Somebody... So, yeah, go ahead, Stephanie. I'm sorry, I meant to cut you off. No, so that's, you know, that's a good point. You know, not just, I was just thinking, not just those stores, you know, we don't know where things are coming from and we pay a lot of money for, for you know, certain items and even furniture stores, you know, we go to these places and we just buy and not even thinking to bless them before they even come in the home. 
That's so, right. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Anything you bring in your home, you should. Anything, groceries, yeah, everything, everything. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. they curse that too. They curse it. Yeah, a lot of stuff. I hate saying this, guys, but this is why you you bless your food before you eat it. Yes. Amen. Right. Right. Yeah. You bless your food before you eat it. And Reverend Jason, you remember that T-shirt? I think you you. What was the name of that T-shirt they they were selling at TJ Maxx? Oh, it was uh. Jezebel. Uh, it had Jezebel, yeah, I remember that. I, I'm trying to remember the verse though, because they twisted the verse and they put something about Jezebel on it. Jezebel 316. <laughs> wow. Instead of John 316. Yeah, they wow. had a t-shirt like that. They had yeah. that in you know, it was it was on sale too. It was discounted. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> it was discounted, you know. <laughs> it was on sale. <laughs> mm -hmm. wow. You could get that t-shirt and wear it. Yeah. So wow. be careful what you wear, you know, bless your food, blessed. Anything, yeah. any items that you bring into your home, make sure you bless it, okay? Yeah. Because you don't want to bring a cursed object into your home. And the worst thing about that is you could bring a cursed object into your home, not even know it's cursed. You will never figure out what it is. Because, see, when you bring something cursed into your home, let's suppose I bring, this is a cursed object, right? I bring this into my home, right? The demon's going to wait and wait and wait until you forget that you brought this home. And guess mm -hmm. what happens? Mm-hmm. He got, you. he got you because you're never going to figure out that he, this bottle has a demon in it. Yes. Right? And also remember the um, sheet that you gave us to go over um, to bless the house. You know, I would I would often, you know, bless my house, but not on a regular like I do now, yes. you know, since joining um, your classes. But um, also. um after doing it, you know, after receiving your paper and the information on there, it made me more aware of um, things that I didn't bless in my house. Mm -hmm. You know, objects that I do have, like my television, you know, and things like that. We're just thinking, oh, it's brand new. It's good to go. You know, that and this and that and the other. Or maybe somebody gave you a gift or something and you just, you know, accepted it and not even thinking to bless it. Right. And I just, you know, as I got the information from you, I'm like, Lord, whatever it is, you know, going through my home, just, you know, just anointing and blessing it, you know, with the oil and just blessing it, you know, just being the blood of Jesus over it. And so it just made me more aware when I, you know, got the information and everything from you. Absolutely. So I thank you for that, um, that I was just able to go through and, you know, just do that on a regular now, just to bless things that I, I wouldn't even think about to bless. And so um, I'm more aware now, um, more so than ever. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Reverend uh, Hutchinson. I think you're, you're, you have your microphone off. <laughs> yes. Go um, ahead, sir. So, just to capitalize on what uh, Stephanie was just oh. mentioning, um, church that my wife and I were attending about 18 months ago, um, there was a woman, she had a husband, uh, but the, the woman gave my wife some uh, salt. Uh, I can't think of the name of it. Uh, what is it, that purple stuff that you put in? Oh, Epsom salt. Lavender? No, no, no. Uh, Epsom salt. I think it was... I, I think it was a combination of both because it was like purple or, but anyway, she was a supposed blessed salt. I'll just say that. <laughs> and uh, let's just say that uh, probably a couple of months after she had given that and we had it in our bathroom, um, that's when I noticed we were having some issues with them. And I won't go into the details, but the bottom line is uh, it took a while. It took a, a few more months for me to put everything, the pieces together. And bottom line is um, the mm. Lord told me to take that salt, get it out of my house, mm. throw it away. Yes. And, and I did that that mm. week, that week, um, we were able to break some ties, get some distance and get some peace but we didn't I didn't know at the time that um, 
you know, they, they, they seemed so nice and so friendly and everything. And we had this little salt in our bathroom and, and, um, and, and we started having some issues. And, but the bottom line is you got to be careful. And yeah. this came from people at church. And I've since come to believe that uh, she was probably a witch. I'll just leave it at that. But just to keep wow. this short, and I capitalize on what you were saying, uh, Stephanie, that, um, mm -hmm. you know, it, you, you gotta be careful, even when people that you you see friendly, nice, and mm -hmm. even folk, uh, right. you don't know um, uh, all the time where their heart is. That's exactly right. Mm. Wow. Wow. Yes, thank you, sir. Appreciate it, Pastor. Okay, so, so yeah. remember, what? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. For a statement, rather, um, I've also learned to be careful what shows you are watching or what shows your children are watching, mm -hmm. because I've had a few like different experiences to where I stopped watching things on Disney Channel at a very, mm -hmm. very younger age, only because in a couple of my dreams it was brought to my attention that they use the childhood, the little childhood like characters and things like that to send things off to kids and to implant things into their mind. In particular, I know of um, Mickey Mouse in general. And mm -hmm. then I know I've seen a few things and some other little things on like Cartoon Network and things like that, mm -hmm. that'll send demons to you in your sleep. And my dreams had been kind of flipping around and turning. I know watching like the George Lopez show randomly had weird dreams and crammed to those too. Mm -hmm. And my mom encouraged me to stop watching things like that because of the things that they're sending off. And we don't even know because it seems like, oh, it's a childhood show, but they're implanting things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Reverend Stacy will probably do a one hour teaching on that one day. <laughs> Yeah. of disney <laughs> he he talks about that all the time so yeah absolutely they're using cartoons to put witchcraft on children and to put demons in children so you have to be very careful uh very good statement i appreciate that yes absolutely um anybody else okay we'll continue because i don't think we're going to be able to get through the whole list um but i'm going to continue anyway okay uh so so anything superstitious is witchcraft, okay? So you know how people use a uh, rabbit's foot and and uh, they burn sage incense, you know, a lot of incense for for uh, you know they don't even know what they're doing it, okay? Mm -hmm. We should rely on Jesus Christ. On no objects, you shouldn't rely even on a cross. You know how we use the cross for ministry? We use uh, the cross as a as a sign of uh, you know of of. Um, you know, our faith, but we shouldn't, we shouldn't trust on the cross. We have to trust on Jesus Christ. Okay. So we should, we should, all our trust should be on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he will protect us, that he will keep us safe, that he's our provider, that he's there for us. Okay. So don't use sage, don't use uh, any, anything superstitious, you know? Um, so keep in mind that if any type of superstition is witchcraft. All right. If you believe this is very important because people, people, like 95% of people that come to us, maybe in regards to witchcraft, believe this. They believe that the witchcraft that somebody's doing against them is working. Okay. So, oh, you know, he put a spell on me. Now I have this going on with, you know, in my life. This is happening to me. Okay. If you believe that witchcraft will work on you, guess what? It will work. It will work. Okay. You have given the witch legal right by accepting what they're doing to you. Mm. All right? You're accepting what they're doing to you. So, you know, what? I'm going to ask witches all the time. I'm going to curse you. I laugh at them. <laughs> <laughs> I laugh at them. I say, you can't do anything. You got no power here. Right? So you got to be, you got to be the same thing. You got no power. You have no power against us. You know, we have, we have something called the Elijah challenge. And the Elijah oh. challenge is sometimes when witches will manifest inside someone right we, we have them put your hand up you, you're more powerful because the witch ah, i'm powerful ah, you know they <laughs> you, they tell you all this stuff and they try to scare you and put your hand up <laughs> i said fire the holy ghost to that hand right we put fire the holy ghost to the hand okay use all your power use you're so powerful turn off the fire off the hand 
turn the fire off that again. And they're going like this with their hand. They're shaking their hand around. And, and so yeah, I said, so now you have to admit my God is greater. Right? And yeah, yeah, yeah. And they say, yeah. Okay? So this these are things that we use in order to break down these witches and these demons and stuff like that. And they're very effective things that we use. Okay? Uh, so keep in mind, if you believe somebody has cursed you, guess what? They have because you believe it. All right? So don't believe, you know, we tell people all the time, I said, if we, be, you know, if, if we were, if witchcraft, if you, if you were, if you're working in covenant with God, right? If you were in covenant with God, if you're following the Lord Jesus Christ, if you're doing the right thing, if you're trying to live a life that's godly, they have no power over you. These witches have no power over you. Otherwise, we'll be dead. Okay. Because mm -hmm. they hate me. They put me on the satanic, uh, in the satanic, uh, what was the name of that thing, brother? I, I forget the name. The satanic that. temple. They put yeah. my picture up there. <laughs> <laughs> and they were spamming my Twitter account. Okay. Go ahead, brother. Now, I was just going to uh, piggyback on what you said about watching what you say because witches will, they can't curse a Christian, so they will curse your words. And they will send a demon to monitor your words, your speech. So when you speak things into existence, you're speaking the curse on yourself. So you have to really watch what you're saying. That's all, brother. Absolutely. You're cursing yourself. You can self-curse. That's right, brother. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. So if, you know, if you believe it, it will happen. Okay. Some of the symptoms of witchcraft, this is the most common ones. Mental fogginess. Okay. You can't really think. Your mind's not clear. Uh, mental illness that could make you crazy. Okay. That's a reality. I've gone to people's homes uh, and uh, the, totally gone. She was fine. And suddenly she became crazy. And you know, now she, she doesn't think I'm her husband. And he's doing this and she's doing this. Okay. All right. So we know what's going on here. Okay. All right. This is witchcraft. And you just, you know, you go through a whole process and you command the demons to come out of them. And that's it. That's the end of it. Okay. It's not that simple, but you know. <laughs> We'll work on it and we'll get them delivered, okay? So I have a um, question. Yeah, go ahead. Who's asking? Felicia? Felicia, yeah. Can witches get witchcraft done on them? Can witchcraft? Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. If somebody else does witchcraft on them, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so it can make them like end up in a psych ward or something like that. Absolutely, oh, yeah. yes. So they turn against the demons turn against the witches. So like a lot of witches when they when they're gonna when they're going to die, when they, you know, the, the devil knows they're going to, they turn against the person, mm -hmm. against the witch, okay? They torment them, and they, you know, <laughs> they do that. Mm. All right? Good to know. Yeah. Unexplained illnesses. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> unexplained illnesses. <laughs> unexplained illnesses. People could get unexplained illness, illnesses, right? When you get a demon, mm -hmm. you could get an, uh, an unexplained illness and so you know witches could do that that's exactly what they're doing they're putting demons inside of you to make you sick uh, changes in mood people that were you know happy suddenly are uh, you know they stay in their rooms they don't want to come out they're depressed those type of things are signs of witchcraft oh this is the interesting thing once a witch places a curse on someone guess what they're going to do they're gonna hello pastor miguel how you doing yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you're feeling well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing great. <laughs> they're going to check up on you. Okay. They're going to look oh. at you and they're going to call you on the phone mm -hmm. and they're going to find out, Hey, are you, uh, are you doing okay? And the whole purpose is to see if the witchcraft worked. How's your relationship? How's it, yeah, are you still with your wife? <laughs> you know, wow. that kind of thing. all right. So they check, they check. Um, this made you another I'll bowl of chili. Party. Here you go. <laughs> Big special sauce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we laugh about it. So there's the possibility that there's a lot of people in the site war that's that's filled with. Oh, them. absolutely, it's absolutely. Called, it's okay. called mind fragment. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of people in the mental institu institution that are highly demonized. They've been cursed or they, they picked people up they demons. They to be schizophrenic. Have the yeah, they could be schizophrenic. Them. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. absolutely. I have a question. Go ahead, Alicia. What makes a demon turn on a witch? 
they have no use for them anymore. So they use the witch. And when they don't have any use for the witch anymore, they turn on them. Don't oh. they turn on them when uh, they have like, they haven't finished or done what they were supposed to do? They will if they send, for example, if you if they, they were to send a, a demon to a Christian that's protected, that, that demon is going to turn back and, and it's not going to, it's going to punish the witch, but it's not going to be to the point that, um, you know, the, the witch is going to be forever tormented. It's just temporary torment. And so, you know, because that, that witch needs to keep using that demon for different purposes and reasons. So they make some offerings. I don't know what offerings they maybe they cut a chicken's head or who knows what they do. Okay. <laughs> so, so I'm pretty sure they, they offer something in exchange for the services they're getting from the demon. All right. So that's, that's how that work. Um, Usually, usually, this is the two reasons why witches usually cast spells. Okay, so now you know you have the Wiccan witches and you have the uh, you know the other kind of witches. Okay, they're all witches. Okay, there's no white and black witches. They're all black, uh, bad witches. Okay, so so there's no there's none of that. Uh, you know, oh, I'm a white witch and you know uh, this other stuff. Yeah, that that stuff. That, they're all witches. Okay, so there's two reasons why they do it. They don't like a person, number one. They don't like you. Uh, so they'll cast a spell against you. That's the number one reason why witches attack other people. Okay. And guess what number two is? Jealous. Huh? No. Jealous. No. 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 Somebody they don't pay want them. You to... mm. Somebody pay them to do a curse mm. on you. Okay. Somebody mm. pay them. All right. All right. So anybody could be a witch. I already said that. Uh, witches will try to take your items to curse them. So I'm not trying to make you paranoid, but please pay attention to what I'm going to tell you. Witches will try to take your items and curse them. Okay. So they could take an item. They could take this belongs to me. They take this, right? And they, because it belongs to me, they, they curse it. Okay. And by the way, they could target a demon to you based on an object they take from you. All right, so they could take an item from you. This is, this is they do this quite often to women. They take their menstrual pad that has blood in it and they curse it, okay? And they put a demon inside of you based on that specifically because of the blood in the pad itself. All right, so they do, they do this stuff. They take items and they curse it and they target a demon towards you. Go ahead, uh, Ms. Moore. Where do they get this pad from? Your garbage. Oh, Jesus. Ones that are in your house. People they go to your garbage and they take it. <laughs> they take it from your garbage. They go in your garbage. Right? Everybody knows the story. Well, not everybody knows the story here. But, you know, the story of me coming out of my house and, and, and they marked all my sidewalk and all the side of the sidewalk and everybody on the... Some people even died. They had kidney disease. They got kidney disease from... from from the markets they place in front of my house, nothing happened to me. <laughs> but unfortunately, everybody else on the side of the sidewalk, they, they some of them even died. They had cancer. They got cancer. They got sick and they died. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Reverend Hutchinson. No, you have your, your microphone on. Now, sometimes uh, the witches uh, will um, collect your personal garments. Yeah, that's um, you know, and, and, and an individual will actually give them their personal uh, garments. Um, you know, I, I had a, a case a few months ago where um, there was a woman who and, you know, and me thinking about it afterward, I'm like, how could you not know there was something evil about this? But, you know, she went to this prophet who um, uh, took her personal uh, undergarment and um, and then baptized her mm -hmm. and and then ended up having sex with her um, mm -hmm. and then cursed her. heard that, brother. Right. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. And it's like, you know, it's like in, in our minds, it's kind of like, what what are you thinking to give someone or to think that you can be blessed? And you're gonna have this person pray for you, but they want your personal undergarments. Mm -hmm. Photos. You know, 
right photos, or photos, or something. Or photos something. Yes. naked pictures of you send me naked pictures <laughs> right yeah we see that all the time when people come to our ministry we see that all the time okay so i have a question yeah go ahead so he just um reverend hutchinson said that about the clothes like she willingly gave it to the evilness so when witches astral project they can come and take your clothes without you even knowing right and they can do evil like that like with your personal garments they could take they could usually they come physically into your home so astral projecting is a little bit different okay but they mm. what i'm talking about is they come to your home they see this and they stick it in their pocket or they come can i use your restroom real quick and they go to your restroom mm. and they you know they go to your bathroom and they take personal items from you hair from your brush things like that mm. Mm. that's what mm. we're talking about okay mm -hmm. so if you have enemies make sure that you take your trash out right before the garbage person mm -hmm comes by and picks it up okay so like don't leave it overnight because guess what yeah. somebody if they hate you or somebody pay them yep. they're gonna check your trash and they're gonna look for personal items okay toothbrushes <laughs> things like that okay that's yeah. just you know what else was you that know what i used to do i wouldn't even just alicia you know if i comb if i brush my hair and hair was in my brush and you know how you clean your brush yes I would flush, I would flush any uh, hair that, you know, that was in my brush. I would mm -hmm. put it in the trash can. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good idea. Yeah, make sure they can't use anything against you, especially if you have enemies. Okay, so another thing, a demon, uh, a witch can send a demon to feed you in your dream. They could feed you in your dream, and that's to place demons inside of you. All right, and that's to... Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that when we go into how to deal with witches, because sometimes they could place fluids inside of you, especially if you have an incubus demon and things like that. Um, so one second, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we only, I only have five minutes today. I have to cut it short at nine 50 today. So I'm, I only have four more things and then we'll continue next week with uh, how to deal with witches. Okay, how to deal with them. Okay, so uh, a house or a dwelling that, 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 that is cursed can, can have unusual amount of birds and insects, insects, okay? So if a house is cursed, if something is cursed in the home, you can look at a home and you can see a lot of birds and the, the, you can have an infestation of, of, um, of uh, we see moth, we see uh, flies, we see gnats, infestations. You can see rats inside a, a, a person's home. Uh, and, um, you know, those are usually signs of uh, uh, demons in the home or that the, the home itself is cursed. OK, so I could go around the neighborhood and see look, look around and see uh, homes full of black birds in the top, like crows. Right. That's usually a sign there's something going on in the home. And I drive around that, you know, I drive around and I look around and, and you know, quite often I say, oh, my goodness, that the house is dark. And there's birds in the, in, the, in the roof. There's something wrong with that home, okay? They have, there's some kind of demon or something in that home that needs to be dealt with, okay? So witches may, may ask to project into your home to have sex with you, all right? They could have sex with you, all right? And this is why, you know, we see it quite often. What are you, do, what are you doing inside this woman? Or why do you come to see this woman? I, I like to have sex with her, right? And they hold her down and they have sex with the, with the person and then they leave. All right. So. So you could have a part of a witch inside of you. And this is done through witchcraft. All right. They do it through witchcraft and they're able to p uh, put, place a piece of them inside of you to control you and to manipulate you and to abuse you and to do whatever they want. OK, so they're able to do this. This is something we deal with in our ministry. So we're able to get the witches out. And then next week we'll talk about how to deal with witches. We're going to talk about how to deal with witches inside of you. If a witch refuses to go away, how to deal with astral projecting witches? If all fails and they continue to come to your home, what to do? We're going to talk about how to deal with uh, eating portions and food that are that is cursed. And then we're going to talk about fluids left by demons. More, more, you know, for example, sexual fluids. Okay. We're going to talk about that. Okay, so before we close, any questions? Any questions? That will be next week. And then after that, we're going to go ahead into children's deliverance. Go ahead, Brother Stacy. I just want to make one comment about your, uh, you were talking about a cursed object, what a lot of people don't know when they curse themselves. 
simple as in, in for children too, in the wishing well, flipping coins in the wishing well, you're coming into agreement with water spirits and the rain king. So you don't want to do that kind of stuff. You know, you see the wishing wells in the malls or real things anywhere. You make sure you don't do any of that kind of stuff because that's bringing you in agreement with the demonic. So yeah, whoever takes up that assignment, guess what? You just went home with that demon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You just have to have permission or some way of entry to astral project into a home. Nope. That's why you got to you gotta put up protection before you go to bed. <laughs> yeah, I'll talk about that next week. That's what we're going to talk about, how to protect yourself and your and your family and your, and your home. And uh, I think you're going to find it very interesting because, uh, like I said, nobody talks about this stuff. You need You need to know. You need to know how to protect yourself. You really do. Okay. So let's go ahead and end with prayer. Uh, Reverend Hutchinson, you want to end with prayer, sir? Yes, sir. Dear Heavenly Father, we glorify, honor, and praise you. We thank you, Lord, for the message, the word, the teaching that was brought forth by Reverend Miguel. Lord, we just thank you for his inspiration. And please continue to guide and direct him, fill him with your Holy Spirit, order his steps, and, and direct him as he uh, brings his uh, teachings and, and the word to us. And Lord, for all of us here, please sort our steps, guide us, fill us with your spirit. Give us a heart and mind, Lord, to search your uh, scriptures, to seek you with all of our heart and to lean upon you and not our own understanding. Please guide and protect our families and keep us all growing in your grace and knowledge. And uh, we just thank you for being so mighty and awesome in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord Thank Jesus. You. Okay, so the teaching, this teaching is going to be on our website under the blog. So if you want the notes, the notes are going to be written down there uh, under our blog. Uh, so just the first part, the, the second part will be after I teach it next Tuesday, okay? So thank you so much, guys, for joining us here tonight. God bless each and every one of you, and we'll see you next Tuesday. God bless. Okay. God bless you. Bye-bye.